My dearly beloved in Christ, the first Sunday of October is referred to as Rosary Sunday. In fact, for quite a while, the first Sunday of October was the Feast of the Holy Rosary until it was uh, fixed by one of the popes, I believe Pope St. Pius X, in the early 20th century to the date of October 7th. So still today we honor Our Lady's Rosary and indeed throughout this month. And I would like to speak about the Rosary this morning, which is so important, a part of our spiritual lives. But first of all, let us briefly look at today's Gospel, in which we have the story of a wonderful cure brought about by our Lord in it says his own town. He came across the Sea of Galilee to his own town, which was a town called Capharnaum. And our Lord was speaking there in the house, and so many people were pressing into the house to hear him and crowded around the house that four men who carried a paralyzed man on a pallet were not able to get in. And they very much wanted our Lord to cure their friend. So they climbed up onto the roof of the house. And we have this from St. Mark's Gospel on this, this particular cure. They climbed up onto the roof. They removed the tiles. And they lowered the sick man down right in front of our Lord on his pallet. And it says our Lord seeing their faith, meaning the faith of the friends, who had brought him and and had gone to such a length to procure this cure that our Lord said to the man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Now let us reflect upon what a joy those words must have brought to the heart of this man. Thy sins are forgiven thee. Because is it not true that sometimes we have fear and doubt And we wonder to ourselves, I wonder if God has forgiven me all my sins. I know I've done what I should. I've made a good confession. I strive to make atonement for my sins, to live a good prayer life, to receive the sacraments. But have I done enough? So you can imagine what a joy it was for this man to hear from the word, from the lips of the Son of God himself, those words, Thy sins are forgiven thee. That cure of his soul was of far greater value than the cure of his body, which was what the people witnessed, what appears externally, the physical cure. But the spiritual cure was even more valuable. So how then can we have a confidence that our sins have been forgiven? Well, one of the best ways is by praying faithfully the rosary every day. We should have a great confidence if we are striving to live a good Catholic life. And our conscience tells us that we have made good confessions. And we're praying our rosary faithfully every day. That should be to us a source of tremendous confidence. Now regarding the rosary, it's good practice every year during October, to take out the book on the rosary by St. Louis de Montfort. I think this is the best book on the rosary. And much of the book, St. Louis, Marie de Montfort, talks about the origin of the rosary, how it was given in the form we have it to St. Dominic in the 13th century as an aid in conquering the Albigensian heresy. He talks a great deal about another holy priest named Blessed Alan de la Roche, who traveled throughout France and promoted the rosary in the 15th century. But here is a little quote of Our Lady to this man, Blessed Alan. When you say your rosary, the angels rejoice. The Blessed Trinity delights in it. My son finds joy in it too. And I myself am happier than you can guess. After the holy sacrifice of the Mass, there is nothing in the church that I love as much as the rosary. So those again were words of Our Lady to this priest, Blessed Alan. And the story is told in the book that this priest was very devout to the rosary, but he wasn't preaching it. And one day our Lord spoke to him from the host 
as he consecrated the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And then our Lord spoke to him and said, and said to him, you are responsible for the sins of the people. And he was shocked and terrified at that thought. And he said, why, Lord? And our Lord said, because you know the value of the rosary and you're not preaching it. So he began to preach the rosary with marvelous results. We should make certain that we are faithful to the rosary every day after everything that we have learned, everything we have heard, and especially the apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima. Every time she appeared, she asked the children to tell the people to pray the rosary every day. And they had been waiting to hear her name. Several times, Lucia said, when will you tell us your name? And Our Lady said, in October, I will tell you who I am. And so finally, she revealed herself on the final apparition on October 13th. And she said, I am the Lady of the Rosary. Now you think of all the different titles Our Lady could have used to identify herself to the children. She used that of the Lady of the Rosary, showing us the regard she has, the love she has for the rosary and the rosaries that we pray, and also to show us the importance of the Holy Rosary in our times. When we are living in an age where there is so much evil, there are so many errors, there are so many spiritual dangers, we need the graces that come from the devout recitation of the rosary. The rosary is primarily composed of the Our Father, the best prayer of all, the prayer given to us by our Lord himself, and the Hail Mary, which begins with the salutation of the angel to Our Lady to become the mother of God, and includes the beautiful words of Elizabeth to Our Lady, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And then the final part, in honor of Our Lady, calling her the Holy Mother of God, asking for her help, her prayers, the final part added by the church. But we say these two prayers, and as we do so, we meditate upon, we think about the mysteries of the lives of Jesus and Mary, the joyful, the sorrowful, and the glorious mysteries, their lives of joy and of sorrow, and now their glory in heaven. Now, many people will say, well, I try to pray the rosary, but I get distracted, or it's difficult. Do not, for that reason, give up praying the rosary. We have to continue to make the effort to meditate, to shut out the distractions of the world, to think about the mysteries. Maybe use a book that has a, a reading on the mystery or a, a picture of the mystery. But continue to make the effort to pray the rosary well and to pray it faithfully every day. And I think that parents who are so concerned about their children and perhaps worried that they raise their children, they teach them right. Well, when they're old enough, when they're adults, will they persevere in their faith? Or will they wander stray away from the faith? Certainly a worry that parents have, especially today. There is nothing more important that you can do than to pray the family rosary. Our Lord said, where two or three are gathered together, in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So anytime we pray the rosary or any other prayers as a group, our Lord says that he is there in a special way. There is a greater value, a greater efficacy to our prayers when we pray in common with others. How much the family rosary must be pleasing to Almighty God, where this unit, this cell of the mystical body, the family, are praying together, the rosary every day. And some people will say to me, well, we used to do that, but you know, this one wasn't there and we waited and this one, this, you know, son or daughter wasn't home. And then we ended up not praying it. And I would say, well, even if someone is absent for some reason, the rest should pray the rosary. Don't put it off. Don't neglect it just because there is an, a family member who is absent. Pray the rosary every day and you will find in your life, the benefits from the rosary. I have heard this over and over again of people who receive the grace to understand the truth, to reject the Novus Ordo 
and the modern conciliar church. And then you talk to them and you find out, well, they began to pray the rosary. Because the grace to understand the truth comes from Almighty God through the hands of our Blessed Mother, who is the mediatrix of all graces. And she is going to dispense her graces and the amount of graces at her will, especially to those who love and honor her. And the rosary is the best prayer that we can pray to honor our Blessed Mother. So let us all rededicate ourselves this month to praying the rosary faithfully every day, and if you can, to pray more. Some even pray the entire rosary of 15 mysteries. What a wonderful practice. But to pray as much as you can, and especially for families, to pray together the family rosary. You will find that there is nothing better that you can do as a family to strengthen yourselves, to persevere in the faith, and to live good Catholic lives. And then to have that assurance from our Lord, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. You have honored me. You have sought to do what you ought to do. I love you. I have forgiven you. And I have prepared a place for you in heaven. Let us stay close to our Blessed Mother. Let us be faithful to her rosary and constantly strive to pray it as well as we can and never get to get discouraged by distractions or difficulties, but to persevere in praying it. And we will truly find in our lives, throughout our lives, but especially at the end of our life, the benefit of all those rosaries that we offered, those crowns of roses that we offered to our Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.